So what's up guys, what's growing on? So I'm coming at you in quarantine here from the food forest in Florida and I'm trying to come at you with some more relevant information for quick growing crops. And the crop that I'm gonna speak to you guys about today is actually one of the most nutritious crops in the world. Um, makes an excellent ground cover, but it's one of the most nutritious crops because you not only can eat the root, but you can eat the leaves from this crop. You know, and we're gonna be talking about sweet potatoes today and showing you how we plant them and how we grow them here on the farm. And something I'll point out, you know, not all sweet potatoes have to be that orange sweet potato that we're used to seeing in the grocery store. There's white ones, there's purple ones, there's pink ones. There's a whole world of variety of sweet potatoes. And what I actually enjoy more than the potato is that green. Um, harvesting those greens, cooking those greens, and just having those as a side all summer long. So even though sweet potatoes could take 90 to 110 days to produce, you know, good tubers and ready for harvest, during that time, after, once that ground cover establishes, you know, we're eating those greens for months on end before we actually get to the potatoes. Then we get that awesome potato harvest, you know, and then we have this crop that we could stick in crates and keep in our closet indoors, and it'll last up to nine months inside the house. I've heard of some people even getting a year in the right environment. So, um, you know, this is an excellent ground cover to protect the soil. It's all about shading the soil, so, you know, stopping those indicator species from coming in. And we're gonna be transitioning those crops, you know, around the farm. I haven't actually planted sweet potato slips in about two years here. Where I have out in the past has been out there in the market garden. And it's about midday right now. We're getting done putting the slips out there and I'm gonna finish up over here in the food forest and um, right across from my house per se. And the lighting over here isn't quite as harsh. So I'm gonna show you guys how we plant them in this area over here. Um, and they just make a beautiful ground cover. Obviously you get a sweet potato from them. Um, super delicious green, like I mentioned. They're super easy to grow. So I'm gonna show you guys some slips, show you how we do this, hold tight. All right, so I'm kind of over here on the um, the east edge of the market garden. You can see the ground's really brown here below me. Um, our perennial peanut, our sunshine mimosas, our perennial ground covers are just starting to come back and that winter ground cover um, is just dying off. If that video hasn't dropped yet, it'll be out here really soon, but I made a video on my favorite wintertime cover crop down here in Florida and I've been really impressed with it over the last couple of years, especially as we get kind of this weather weirdness in the winter and it goes from hot to cold, hot to cold. Um, you know, it, we, we get that transition from where the, you know, the things have stopped being dormant and all of a sudden we get these weeds emerging. Um, so I've found this ground cover to work really great in the winter time, but this video is about summertime sweet potatoes. So hold on. So you can see in this area, all the green coming back up is the perennial peanut. Like I said, that area we're transitioning from our winter cover crop to sweet potatoes, but some of the other cover crops I really like to use are beans, legumes. So in, in the summertime here, we plant a lot of this Puerto Rican black bean. Um, I also like to use cow peas. So any type of nitrogen fixing bean, legume type bean mixed in with that sweet potato is gonna help to add some of that nitrogen back to the soil. But like I mentioned, you know, we transition the areas where we're growing sweet potatoes. So even though I didn't plant them last year, the year before that, when I did plant them, they were over here in the fig zone. We're not replanting that zone. We're gonna kind of put them over here in the peach and the plum zone. Um, we've got three or four patches out here and we're gonna do them up in the food forest by the house. So I'm gonna show you those going in the ground. All right, so it is so dry and harsh right now out here. You can even see the clumping grasses. The fact of hatchy grass behind me is brown. We got some light rain last week. Some of the grasses around the driveway started to come back. And this section, the next section back there, we've just done sweet potato slips. And we're basically gonna water these one time um, before we actually kind of just set it and forget it in these areas. So we're doing a little bit of hand watering, getting these slips kind of established, hoping that we get a little bit of rain. If we do not get some rain, I'll probably stick an overhead sprinkler out here maybe every other day for a week or two just to get these slips kind of you know established and going. But I'm gonna show you what they look like. They're not so pretty when we get them anyways. All right, so I got my last two packs of sweet potatoes. We're getting ready to plant them over here in the food forest across from my house. And something I forgot to mention was sweet potatoes definitely produce a lot better in full sun. So if I put them in the dappled light, they're gonna make leaves, but they're not gonna set as many tubers. Um, the best way to start these is definitely from slips. I've got some slips right here. I'm gonna show you what a slip looks like. And this is uh, Mr. Calvin, part of the uh, farm family. What varieties have we got, bro? Got Bogard and Georgia Jet here. Whoa, show us what a slip looks like. So a slip is basically like a cutting with roots. Let me see what one of those look like. Pull one up, take it apart for them. Let me see, Callie. Whoa. So here's two of them. And you can see they have a couple of roots there on the bottom. And they look really rough. I mean, they'll come in the mail and they'll be wilted. We stuck them in some water. We stuck them in some dappled light. And where's our tool for putting those in the ground? Show us how we're gonna do this. 
pretty easy here. Oh, yeah, this is the easiest part. These are probably one of the simplest crops to plant. You're gonna, you're gonna like look at how we're doing this. You'd be like, that is silly easy, and it really is that easy. Whoa, what do you got there? What kind of special tool is that? Anything like this, breaking Whoa. a hole in the soil. So you can use a screwdriver, whatever it may be. I buy um, chainsaws, obviously landscaping tools, and these come with every, uh, every tool we buy. So I like this because it has a T-handle. It just pushes down in the ground. We drop that slip down in there. Come on, let's pop some in the ground. So the idea here with these slips, you want to get them about 12 inches apart. Like I said, in some full sun, water them once they've been put in, and then literally just watch them grow. Beautiful ground cover, edible leaves. We know they have edible tubers. I get absolutely zero kickback from any type of sweet potato company. I don't care where you guys buy these. I believe these are from uh, taterman.com. I will tell you that some of the best sweet potato slips in the world come from Sand Hill Preservation. Very old school, no computer. You have to send a check. These guys have like 200 heirloom varieties. And Mr. Calvin's over here popping some in the ground. So about 12 inches apart, he's literally just gonna punch a hole. And you can just do them in lines, whatever way works easy for you. We just remulch some of these areas, so the mulch is a little bit thicker than I would like it to be. But the idea is to get nice contact with the native soil. That's why he's pushing that all the way down in there. And you can see I'll be making a video here soon about the cassava. This is some from last year, but I've got a couple new varieties of cassava um, that we've been planting out. You can see this one has a red stem. This one has kind of a green stem. You can barely tell here probably from the camera. All right guys, so it doesn't get any easier than that. You need to be planting sweet potatoes. These are awesome survival food, awesome staple crop, awesome food security just to have out growing in your yard. Um, I think one of my favorite parts, like I mentioned, is eating the leaves. So I can come back to this patch here in a couple of weeks and this is gonna be a dense ground cover of sweet potatoes throughout. And what I really like to do is break off the, twi the tips of the actual sweet potato vine. I'll try to get back out here with the camera when I start eating some of this stuff. Maybe I'll even cook up a dish, show you how we bring it inside, but it's really very easy. We just kind of boil it down or steam it down, should I say, a little salt and pepper, and it's a delicious side. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this short video here on sweet potatoes. I hope it makes you think about growing some sweet potatoes if you have that ability. If you guys enjoyed this video, please consider supporting our Patreon. Um, you know, 50 cents, a dollar a month, whatever it may be. If you don't even have the money, just share the video. Get it out there. That is support in itself. We appreciate every single one of y'all. I'm going to start trying to drop more videos here, especially during this whole kind of crazy pandemic thing. So we're hoping for less edited videos, more videos per week. So that's what counts. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and do so. And let's do that social, di social distancing pound dirt. Are you ready, Calvin? We're going to do it on three. You ready? One. Two, three, pounder. Ooh.